हेलो गाइस माय नेम इज ऋतविक एंड इन द पार्ट फोर ऑफ एक्सप्लोरेटरी डेटा एनालिसिस वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट टॉपिक लाइक दिस द फर्स्ट टॉपिक दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन दिस वीडियो इज कोवेरियंस सॉरी सो वेरियंस एंड स्टैंडर्ड एविएशन सो वेरियंस स्टैंडर्ड एविएशन एंड मीडियन सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट टॉपिक दैट वी आर डिस्कसिंग इन दिस वीडियो so what is a variance means right and how does it is useful so probably you know how to calculate the variance so you need to calculate the mean of a column suppose we have a column called sepal length right sepal length is a column which contain continuous numerical variables numerical value right cal value and i want to calculate the variance of this particular column so i have values in this column like this 6.8 i roughly write 7.2 etc so here i'm going to first calculate the mean of the values so if you do not know how to calculate the mean so it's very easy to perform addition between all these variables and and divide the whole addition by by number of element that particular array that particular list contain right so let me do this to do this for you so suppose i want to calculate a mean for sepal length so here here we have a list called sepal length list in which we have some values like this 4.3 4.4 so now i want to calculate the sum of this here i got attribute error so i need to write like this sepal length list right whatever value i got here i need to divide by the length of sepal length list so i got 5.84 now if i want to check this value then how can i check df dot sepal length okay okay this is the same thing now if i want to calculate the mean of this and here i do something 5.8433 okay now after the calculating the mean we are going to subtract this mean from all the values one by one suppose we have a mean here is 5.84 so i'm going to subtract this mean from every value that is 7.2 5.84 6.5 and 5.84 after subtracting this i'm going to square this and uh, whatever value we get it is called as a variance right after okay i need to after squaring this i need to calculate The addition and divide by the whole addition is the number of elements. So here you can get the same thing by just calculating the variance. Suppose I don't to calculate the variance. You don't have any pre-built function, right? So you can calculate the STD, and whatever value you got, you need to just square. To square, we have np dot sqare square function. With the help of this function, you can square any value number. So it is 
so the variance is 0 0.68 and the standard deviation here we got his sepal so sepal length dot std again 0 0.2 so this is the way you can implement the standard deviation mean and uh, np dot sorry standard deviation mean and variance now if you want to calculate the median value how you can calculate suppose we have a function it's yeah median it's a 5.8 so now it's time to tell you that why we what is the need to use all such things in a data science right suppose you are working with data set and you are trying to solve a problem of classification right so when are you when whenever you try to solve a classification problem at that time you need to keep in mind that you need to separate the data first right so as we can see here as we can see in our eda part that we are trying to separate the set of safflower from wasi color and virginica right also we do the same thing for this two right so as far as our data or our class is separate from others that is very good for us because our model will accurate for them so if my if this is the case like uh, we have a separate set of class but there are some merger data point between Vosicolo and Virginica right and if we create a model on that on this then our model will be much more accurate to predict set of flower instead of and in this case model will not accurate right there is some possibility or there is some error that happen whenever we try to predict Ossi color and Vojanika right because in this case our data point is misclassified and because of the module so we need to understand that how our data is well separated that's why we have a variance and standard deviation we use right so basically standard deviation is a numerical value with the help of this numerical value you can easily identify that it at which standard deviation after the base standard deviation you can consider a particular data point as an outlier so probably i talk about in my previous video talk about a Gaussian distribution in my previous video right so Gaussian distribution has a rule called 68 95.4 and 97.3 so in the first deviation right so this is a Gaussian distribution look like so in the first deviation it cover 68 points so a particular column if a particular column follow the Gaussian distribution so in the first standard deviation it consider 68 percent of data in the second in the second standard deviation it consider 95.4 percent of data and in the third standard deviation it consider 97.43 percent of data after three standard deviation whatever value we have here is the minus 3 standard deviation here is the plus 3 standard deviation whatever value we have it's those value are we those values we are considered as outlier so we need to remove remove them or we need to perform feature engineering or the feature engineering on the outlier so we can convert this outlier and this, uh, so we can convert this outlier and be a part of this Gaussian distribution right okay so that's why we use 
variance and standard deviation right apart from that uh, the values of uh, standard deviation is low right that means it the all the data points are near the mean right and if the values of standard deviation is high that means data points are near the data points are far from the data points data points are far from the mean right so now the what is the case of mean here because you can see this mean as a we have some missing values sometimes we have a data set in which we have a lot of missing values to fulfill those missing values we can fulfill those missing value by inputting a mean a mean okay so that's why we can use a mean after that we are going to talk about why we use median suppose you have a data set of income column right data set in which you need to get the income of the employers so the, there are some employers of reliance company right suppose there are some employers of reliance company so example in this we need to calculate the cdf right and uh, so here we are going to write some of the salary right it's like uh, this 60000 70000 here someone is only on 30000 someone is earning 20000 right and where we talk about a uh, mr ambani the earning of this is year by crore right okay so it is high far from the this normal salary so at that time if we calculate the mean right for this column to impute any and uh, any missing value then it consider a very high number right so that's why it consider a very high number and we can do this to our data set why because it's change its distortion of histogram so why we don't want to change our distortion of histogram because it also change the behavior of data and model will learn false weight and biases and end of the season we are not going to build a high accurate model that's why to avoid all such consequences we are using median in such case when we have outliers right in this case this salary is considered as outlier why because it's pretty much higher than all of this right so if we are trying to plot okay plot a scatter we are trying to plot a scatter plot than this so suppose this is 50,000 this data, pro data point represent 60,000 salary this data point represent 20,000 salary and so on 
and if we want to plot a diagram between two variables then this 10 crore I know how many did this 10 crore seller is out of this group right there is a lot of distance between this group and a particular this data point that means our machine is considered this data point as outlier now what are the outliers we are going to discuss in next video now we have another topic called percentile and quantile so maybe you got all the information that i provide to you what is the variance what is the standard deviation what is the median and why we use uh, standard deviation and where we use variance standard deviation and median in a data science right so now we have another question to solve it is called as a percentile and quantile so what is the use of percentile and quantile here we have a percentile and quantile so as you can see when we are trying to use describe function you got some information like count mean 50% 25% and 75% and maximum number what does that mean suppose we are going to use the same example like XYZ company and you are a data scientist in this company company wants to buy t-shirt for his employee and you need to identify that how much portion we should buy of L size t-shirt how much portion we should buy for M size t-shirt and XL size t-shirt right so suppose this is a graph which contain 160 to 180 so here is 25% here is 50% which represent a median In this bar we contain all the information about uh, we contain the height of all the employees and here is a 75% so how we can interpret 25% here what does it mean 25% so whatever value right is less than this right whatever value is less than this so we can evaluate like this like 25% of employees of this company have height is like here we have a value is 170 170 centimeter here we have a value is 180 so we can say that 50 percent of employee have height is less than okay is less than here we are going to write is less than 170 meter employee here have height is less than 180 centimeter so yeah this way you can interpret the quantile percentile sorry right and uh, suppose i want to use this suppose i want to implement percentile right so in order to implement a percentile we need to pass a data here so simple length list and as a quantile i want to calculate 25 so here you got 5.1 and if I want to calculate the statistic for this, right? So as you can see here, so it's a sample length, this right? So df dot sample length centimeter dot describe. So here you can see we have a twenty five percent. So how we can interpret this? 
If you want to interpret this, then this way you can interpret. 25% of flowers have sepal length is less than 5.1 centimeter. Suppose you want to identify that what is the sample what is the how many portion of data cover in 75 percent right suppose i want to calculate so 64 percent 64 64 height so here you can interpret this in this way so 75 percent of flowers have sample length is less than 6.4 centimeter. centimeter right now the question is what is a quantile so quantile is like this like quantile represent a percentage right okay so in the percentile so now we got what is a percentile and what is a quantile now the question is what is the interquantile range suppose so basically when we use describe function we have statistics called mean 25 percentile 50 percentile 75 percentile and uh, max so here this one is represented as q1 and this one is represented as q3 and if we calculate q3 minus q1 whatever range we will get here it is an interquantile range iqr interquantile range so suppose if you are per uh, if you particular column is not follow Gaussian distribution or normal distribution at that time to get the information about the outliers you can calculate the interquantile range whatever data is not below sorry it is not lie between the range whatever get we will whatever we will get from the IQR then we can consider those as a outlier we can consider those data point as a outlier if those data point is not follow in the range of iqr right okay so how can we calculate that a particular data point is outlier or not so suppose 6.4 minus 5.1 here we get 1.3 so below range is 1.3 and if i want to 6.4 plus upper range is 5.1 this is a below range and this is for upper range upper range if a particular data point is a particular data point has a separate length is less than 1.3 right so this let me put in this way iq1 right and iq3 so just okay up uh, lower range is iq3 minus iq1 and here we get lower range and for upper range is iq3 iq1 upper range 11.5 so if 
any data point is not lying between 11 sorry between 1.3 and 11.5 then you can consider that as outlier right okay so probably you know that why we use variance standard deviation percentile and quantile and here you know that what is the interquantile range you can you use all this to get the information of outliers now we are going to plot a box plot right so basically it is also box plot is also give us that how our data is well separated so in the sns we have a function called a box plot in which we need to pass a categorical variable so x species and in a y we need to pass a continuous variable clear dot sample length here we got so if we plot a box plot on sample length then here we can say that iris data set box plot iris data set box is overlapping on iris versicolor whereas iris versicolor box is overlapping on iris virginica so that is not good for our model so let me try a box plot for another variable another column x is equal to df dot species and y is equal to df dot sample width so here we again we have a same problem so instead of using sample width I'm going to plot a box plot for petal length here so when we try to box plot try to plot our box plot for petal length at that time we can see here that iris setosa flower is well separable from iris versicolor and iris virginica there is a minor or there is a, a low or there is a minor overlap between versinica and virginica uh, versicolor and virginica so whatever the line here you can see it is called as a viscous so this represent the iq3 is a upper quartile iq3 is a upper quantile here you can see that what is in quantile means in the quantile 3 70 it represents the 75 percentage sorry this this value so this value is represent the 75 percentage and this value is represent the 25 and the medial line is represent the 55 percentage and as a assumption whatever data is out of this whatever data point is out of this upper whisker this is the upper whisker and this is a lower whisker we can treat as outlier here you can see that this particular data point treat as as outlier and in iris setus we have two data points which can be treated as outlier and the same thing here we don't have any in iris virginica clear okay so how can we calculate the two whiskers so first of all i want to tell you that this whisker is calculated by seaborn library but uh, the problem uh, the function for that is the three into iqr right if you want to calculate the upper whisker then you have a form you have to calculate like this in this way 3 into iq 3 so this 
so yani either three or two you can use that to calculate clear okay so in this way you can plot a box plot now we are trying to plot a violin plot in the simon library so plot a violin plot i need to access df dot species where y is the same thing df dot at length here you can see so we have a same thing like here we can see that most of the data points if the violin like like this is a fact that means most of the data points are near to the mean value or median value here you can see that if this is not so far fat then we can say that here most of the data points here you can say that most of the data points are not near to the median value right so you can if you want to see that a particular data points most of the data points are near to the median or not at that time you can use this violin plot so that's all that's all for now thank you for watching